So good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, for this session on TB and cities. Uh, this is actually the second session about TB and cities. Um, second one today, you know? Or the one, other one was yesterday, I think. Um, so we're very happy that uh, that uh, there is now more of a discussion around this topic. Um, I want to acknowledge um, Puneet, uh, who has submitted, I think, good urban TV panels for the last two years, and been uh, and been turned down. And finally, we we got in. <laughs> so I think it's an important topic. Uh, as we know, there are more and more what's called mega cities um, in the world. People are flooding into urban centres, and those um, health systems can be quite different. So I don't know how I control this. How do we control? So just to introduce today, we have um, <clears throat> a series of speakers, um, two from India, one from Bangladesh, one from Pakistan, and uh, Mirtil will bring the, the uh, Paho um, perspective. And just one introductory slide, just to give some context. So wh why are we even classifying urban as a topic to talk about? It's TB, it's TB control. The same issues are important. You, you have to find the cases, treat the cases, etc. So why is this even a topic for discussion? And this is just a, some ideas about, um, about what's different in urban areas. So again, you have a, a different mix of, of providers. You have people flooding into an area where the infrastructure may not have kept up um, with their needs. Um, so you can read that for yourself, but I draw attention to the last line which says, you know, there are different opportunities here. So there are different stakeholders. You often have a municipal corporation. Um, and so you, you're dealing with them as much or even more than you're dealing with the, the overall Ministry of Health. Um, and this is a particular unit, a particular unit of geography, of political governance, etc., where you can make a very big, aggressive, strong move. Um, so it, it presents a potentially more achievable forum where, you, where we can make a big advance in TB control. And I think we'll see some examples of that today. So that's, that's my opening. And I want, want to hand over to my co-chair from the partnership, uh, Dr. Sahu. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Sahu Suwanan Sahu from Stop TB Partnership. Uh, I would just add uh, uh, one point to what uh, William said. If you look at uh, cities that are growing and uh, developing fast, these are economic hub. A lot of activities are happening there. Uh, but there are some implications of that. There, there is large-scale migration. There is uh, also, uh, in many cities, uh, people, you can see how they live. The, the gap between the rich and poor is increasing. Uh, there is over congestion on the infrastructure, on housing. So this is a place where uh, uh, there is a high possibility of high transmission and high burden. But also this is an opportunity because cities have resources that other places do not have. You, uh, you, uh, you don't have to necessarily <coughs> depend only on one channel of funding from the national level. You have several channels of funding in the city if those can be mobilized. So we should think about it, and it's good to hear uh, in this conference some initial uh, experience in that direction, how cities can uh, move faster and uh, uh, have, a, have a bigger ambition of ending TB. Thank you. So, great. So that, and, and sorry for not introducing myself, I'm William Wells from USA, Washington. Um, so our first speaker today is Shayla Islam from BRAC in Bangladesh. And Shayla is going to talk to us about new strategies for reaching the urban poor with TB services in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Thank you. This one? Yeah. <coughs> 
Honorable Chair, Co-Chairs, uh, Distinguished Delegates, uh, my colleagues and friends from different corners of the globe. Good afternoon, everybody, in my session. My two, today's topic is new strategies for reaching urban poor with TV services in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, here I would like to focus on two words first. Uh, first one is new because uh, uh, all the strategies I am going to explain or share with you are not very new. And another word is poor. All the strategies I am going to explain are not for addressing the poor, mostly for the poor, but there is still for addressing the affordable people. Uh, let me first explain the TB situation in Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh is uh, still the seventh uh, among the hi 22 highest burden, TB burden countries in the world, and population <coughs> is 161 million, and incidence rate is 225 per uh, 100,000 population per year, and the mortality rate is 45 per 100,000 population per year, and MDR TB cases is 6 per 100,000 population, this is uh, according to the WHO Global Report 2016. Uh, let me explain uh, first the little bit background. Actually, uh, I am presenting here on behalf of BRAC, but I will present, uh, I will try to cover this, uh, all the strategy, almost all the strategies uh, which we are doing uh, with the NTP, National Tuberculosis Control Program, as well as our partners in Dhaka City. And BRAC uh, in, uh, is a non-government organization, is implementing tuberculosis control program uh, with national tuberculosis control program since 1994. And urban TB control uh, program uh, basically initiated in 2002. And the tuberculosis control is Dhaka is complex because Dhaka is a huge city and, and it's uh, uh, approximate with approximately 14 million population uh, at present. And multiple partners are working in the urban with different strategies. Urban TB mostly deal with the certain risk groups, as we know, such as urban poor, slum dwellers, garments workers, as well as prisoners. They are exposed to poor environmental conditions, such as overcrowding, poor housing, poor health, and poor nutritional status also. Uh, the strategies I'm going to explain are uh, focused on the urban population as well as the peri-urban model in the Dhaka and around Dhaka city, uh, especially the poor and hospital door services. This is one of the PPM, public private mix approaches uh, for Bangladesh and from where we, are, we get so many patients actually from the hospitals, tertiary level hospitals both public and private, and the services for urban slum dwellers, uh, um, another strategy, and services for garments worker, uh, as well as social enterprise model. This is actually, uh, this, this is the strategy to address the affordable people and at prison. And uh, first of all, the services for urban and peri-urban population, uh, this, uh, the strategy for this model is um, for urban as well as peri-urban are more or less same. Uh, uh, only one difference actually, uh, that is uh, the DOT, daily intake of medicine, uh, in the um, urban areas, that is the metropolitan cities areas are uh, usually center-based and in peri-urban areas it is usually community-based. And BRAC and Eastern Urban Partners, mostly USA supported NGO, NSHDP, NGO health service, um, health service delivery project are implementing the program in the cities. And uh, Sputum Collection Center, uh, there are uh, 109 door centers uh, in the city where uh, BRAC is implementing through 18 centers and other 91 centers are by other um, NGOs. Uh, basically, they are the uh, sub-recipients of uh, BRAC as BRAC is the principal recipient of Global Fund Grant. And uh, they are doing also outreach uh, community centers in the uh, surrounding communities, though it's challenging in the cities. And DOT uh, is done, directly, directly observed treatment is done by paramedics at the centers and community health workers at the community. And routine follow-up of the patients is done also. There is a system uh, designated by NTP. 
So we follow that system for routine follow-up of the patient. And networking with private providers, including pediatricians, is also done with the networking meeting that is uh, done basically six monthly with them. Um, because we have uh, um, a listed and mapped uh, private providers in the cities as well as peri-urban areas. And financial support for identification of smear negative extrapulmonary child and uh, drug resistant TB presumptives are given from the Global Fund grant. And in 2015, if we see uh, that we have identified 17,825 uh, TB patients in the urban area and 4,964, around 5,000 patients at peri-urban centers. This is the hospital or service, and it's, it's one of the already mentions that PPM approaches. And here we have covered already 15 hospitals in the Dhaka cities. <coughs> that is all at tertiary level hospital, both public and private hospitals. And uh, actually, uh, the presumptives from the hospital OPD outpatient department, as well th as the indoor department from different department when patients are diagnosed, they are sent to the doors corner of that hospital because each and every hospitals, that 15 hospital, we have doors corners uh, for TB patients. So they are coming. The after diagnosis, the patients uh, are residing nearby hospital, are registered and provide daily duty from the hospital each and every day, but if the percentage is very less. Most of the patients are referred to the peripheral law center, that 109 peripheral DOT centers and outside uh, Dhaka also sometimes. Uh, and medicine is also provided to in indoor TB patients when they are in admitted in the hospital and during discharge they are referred to the peripheral DOT centers uh, uh, with counseling. Orientation uh, of the hospital doctors are provided to NTP as well as BRAC and interns uh, um, at the hospital level, hospital premises. A total of, uh, we, if we see, that uh, 7,698 TB patients are diagnosed in 2015 from the, those 15 doors corners. <coughs> then if we see the services for urban slums here, the, uh, actually uh, two things are here that we uh, do the mobilization before the day of uh, outreach center happening in the slums. So this is basically done by um, BRAC, BRAC staff. They usually mobilize before the day of organization of outreach cen center inside the uh, slums um, and uh, the, in, in the day of uh, outreach smearing center, the smears are tested, uh, smears are done there and uh, the um, slides are transported to the laboratory for testing. And uh, <coughs> the smear negative and extrapulmonary uh, child and MDRTB symptomatics are also referred from those slums uh, who are presumptives, actually. And the diagnosed patients are registered at the nearby door centers, those 109 door centers. And, and we have got uh, total 751 cases from, uh, those, from those slums we have covered. Uh, one thing I have to um, say here uh, that Mm, around uh, 1 million population in the slums and mm, mm, around 100 uh, slums are in Dhaka city but we have covered only half of the population in the slums. We didn't cover the rest of the half yet. And the services for garments worker, what we are doing actually we are just sensitizing the uh, garments owner and managers and also we have orientation program in the garments uh, worker, among the garments workers, which uh, we actually do at the uh, factory premises. And mobilization by field supervisors for presumptive identification is done. Uh, it's actually done not only by BRAG, but its partners also. Partners are also doing the same thing. And the referral of presum presumptive for sputum uh, uh, examination from the garments uh, uh, factory uh, are sent to those 109 centers and DOT and follow-up are provided at the work workplace by factory paramedics. And a total of uh, 2,656 uh, cases we have identified uh, from uh, peri-urban and urban uh, garments factories in 2015. And this is the social enterprise model. This is basically done by ICDDRB, and, uh, and it is an or international organization which is 
uh, who is the um, sub recipient of national tuberculosis control program and uh, working with us in coordination so icddrb developed a social enterprise model and established its three sc screening center in dhaka urban it's a bit different model and it's usually to address the affordable people who are basically visiting the private practitioners in the country and um, in the cities and uh, the social enterprise model has been working to increase TV case detection to strengthen TV management at the private to address the private sector. And using this model, the private sector has a network of uh, 3,500 private providers uh, that ICDDRB has done in Dhaka metropolitan city. And um, here, I, uh, one thing uh, I can mention that uh, we have more than 10,000 um, PPs, private practitioners in the Dhaka city. I said we has uh, covered because since they are uh, doing uh, in since 2013, um, by this time they have covered 3,500 private practitioners, and they have planned to scale up that uh, this project to uh, cover other private practitioner also. And the continuous engagement with PPs resulted in increased referral of the presumptive TB cases to the screening centers. And in 2014 to 15, a total of 6,192 TB patients were diagnosed by this model. Uh, the, uh, these were the uh, model I have explained, but one uh, model, I think the prison model, I didn't explain here due to uh, shortage of time. So I can say a few things about the uh, prison because in Dhaka prison, basically National Tuberculosis Control Program is uh, implementing the program and there is a DOS corner there. So uh, there is a staff from uh, NTP designated staff actually there. So the patients from the prison teams among the prisoners are screened uh, in that DOS centers and treated uh, with the help of prison authority and um, by the help of the DOS corner. And if we see the result, actually, <coughs> I have already told the case identification, number of case identified uh, from those models. But if we see here, there is the urban door centers and hospital door corners. And the urban door centers, usually we get the smear, more smear positive, if though it's increasing uh, since it's the comparison from 2014 to 15 both of the model and uh, here we can see the most of the cases are smear negative smear positive in the urban door center because we still use the smear microscopy countrywide to uh, firstly identify the tb patients and the hospital door corner if we see there is a huge number of ep cases there because there are so many diagnostic facilities of the, those tertiary hospitals so we are getting much more extra pulmonary cases from uh, from the hospital here the garments factories as well, we uh, actually get um, most of the uh, smear positive patients from the factories because they are um, usually we are, okay, uh, we are using the smear microscopy as well as the urban slums also. And this is actually the referred cases by different providers. If, if we see that in urban cities, the most of the cases, that is 38%, actually is coming from the government hospital, the public hospital doors corner. Is the rural one just I want to see because in the rural one, most of the patients are coming through the community health volunteer. So uh, there are some challenges um, uh, the unpredictable almond lifestyle. We all know the fruiting and mi migrant population integrate patient centered approach at most of the centers are uh, center based. Um, approach is doing we are doing and socioeconomic condition of the urban folks as we know and management of the patients with comorbidity is, is still uh, challenging because we didn't address it properly and patient adherence also because of high migration inadequate coverage at the workplace private sector and uh, as well as public sector is still challenging for us because we didn't cover it properly and the way, way forward is presumptive screening of introducing appropriate diagnostic tool because we are still depending on the smear microscopy. We have, uh, as, as it is complex in the city to identify different uh, types of patients, uh, TB patients. So we should introduce uh, other diagnostic tool also to diagnose and ensure providing test results intensely to patient using SMS because there is a the delay for treatment initiation sometime for urban um, life style and uh, further standing of active case finding for increased diagnosis especially in the garments as well as slums 
and um, increased diagnostic facilities for an, an enhanced case detection uh, according to the need and sustainable networking and coordination with private providers in urban for reducing delay in case detection. And finally, the linkage with tertiary level and specialized hospital to manage comorbidities is the time for that, I think. So thank you, everybody. And I want to, uh, finally, I want to acknowledge the National Tuberculosis Control Program partners under NGO Health Service Delivery Care Project, other urban partners, BGMEA, Bangladesh Garments Manufacture Export Authority, ICDDRB, WHO, Urban TB Control Program, BRAC. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shayla. Uh, any questions of clarification to Shayla? Yes. Uh, just a quick question. Um, there, there was a very large number of cases from the garment factories. About how many workers uh, were there that you were screening just, you know, to find those uh, 2,600 cases? At this moment, I have not the data. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't see. And one, Agnes, yes. I can refer uh, Dr. Amir for this uh, because he was the pioneer of that model. <laughs> I'm very happy. So ICDDRB has kind of brought it into the Bangladesh version, but it's still very much the same concept as the Pakistan model. Yeah. yeah. Any last question? Okay. Thank you very much, Shada. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So our next speaker is Mirta Del Granado um, from Pahu, and she's going to tell us about their. Um, very impressive effort within PAHO to take a very small amount of money and stretch it to very uh, ambitious goals. Thanks, Mirta. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I want to thank to the USAID and the Stop TV Partnership for inviting me to present the experience in uh, Latin America. So, uh, as you know, uh, the, uh, the region most urbanized in the world is the Americas. And if you see for what is the proportion in 2014 who live the, 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 popula the population, the, the sub-region than, re than the region that are more urbanized, uh, you can see that the South America is, was the most urbanized region, uh, sub-region in the Americas. So I want to, I want to see you, for, uh, to show you, for instance, the, the, the countries that are most urbanized. And as you can see, we have three big, well, not, not very big, but uh, three countries that uh, has, uh, have more than 90% of the, the, the population living in cities. But it's, uh, it's amazing, the, 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 the urbanization process in the Latin America. So the rapid urbanization, we need to see the impact. Uh, for instance, the economy activities concentrated in the cities. <coughs> 60 to 8% of the GDP is produced in cities. But the relative incidence of poverty is decreasing, but the absolute numbers of, uh, of poor is increasing. We, uh, in 2012, it was uh, projected that 127 million were poor. One out of every four urban dwellers is poor. 27% of the population lives in slums. Uh, it means 117 million. 
And also, there are a lot of problems to access to health, access to drinking water, sewerage, and the, uh, electricity for the poor. So, analyzing that and knowing that uh, we are missing uh, more than 50,000 cases every year in the region, we are trying to know where, is, uh, where are our cases. So, we analyze the data, and I can show you, for instance, that in Lima, Peru, and Montevideo, Uruguay, the, these cities concentrated the, the more than 60% of the TB cases, that 60% of notified cases are in these cities. And also more than 80% of the MDR cases are concentrated in those cities. So having uh, said that, analyzing that, uh, we perform a lot of meetings with countries, with experts, to try to do what to do differently in cities uh, uh, in the TB control. And uh, we arrive at that the, to recognizing the main barriers of TB control in large cities, and we, we, uh, we have to point that fragmentation and multiple health providers are a big problem. Multiple health authorities, we have the authority of the Ministry of Health, the authority of the municipality, the authority for the army, authority for the prisons, authority for the insurance, etc. Lack of comprehensive health services, so not uh, all the, the, the diseases are offered at the first level, so we have uh, problems there. Uh, diverse patient populations, uh, the uh, ethnic minorities uh, live in the, in the slums, and these uh, populations have uh, their own beliefs, habits, and customs. Poverty and marginalization is also the, uh, limit the diagnosis to healthcare. The lack of intersectoral approach to improve basic living and health conditions. And we have also violence in large cities of Latin America, secondary to social pathologies that led a slums population to the crime, drug addiction, and alcoholism. So after all this, uh, this analysis, uh, the TV team at PAHO wrote a framework for tuberculosis control in large cities in Latin America and the Caribbean that it is composed by eight components. Here, uh, what I'm showing here is the map of the cities that are implemented uh, now this, uh, this uh, initiative. I'm not going to read, uh, I'm going to present what uh, we have in uh, the application of SHAC component in every component. One is the strength and political commitment at the national and local level and coordinate different, different authorities. So we had to do a lot of job because we had meetings with the Minister of Health, meetings with the mayor, meetings with different uh, health authorities. But at the end, uh, we put all together. So, uh, you see the, in Lima, for instance, uh, the, the, the picture is the uh, Vice Minister of uh, Health with the two mayors. In Guarulhos, that it is a uh, municipality of Sao Paulo, Brazil, we have also to put uh, to be to, uh, to meet with the, the, the Minister of Health, uh, with the Ministry of, of, of the, the Mayor, and the uh, different uh, uh, providers. What, uh, the, what was the, resu the result of the, this political commitment? The, in, uh, in Lima was issued uh, the reduction plan for tuberculosis in, uh, in the district of San Juan de Lurigancho, that was on the, the area that we are working. And in Colombia, you can see the e huge increase of amount of money for the TV control in Bogota. And uh, it is money is coming from the local authorities, from the mayor. The second component is conduct an epidemiological mapping of TB situation in cities and identify at risk populations. So, so we uh, do uh, the, we do the we did the mapping in the case of Lima, Peru, for instance, the. Uh, Unit of analysis where the municipalities in Lima, uh, the incidence rate, and also we took uh, the indicator socioeconomic, uh, socioeconomic indicators. You have Bogota, the same, and they decided to begin in Bogota in a localidad that is named the, 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 this, uh, this unit, and we decided to begin in Uribe Uribe, but now it's totally expand to all the city. And Uruguay, also, you have the municipality that they were uh, mapping. The third component is survey and map the health system and existing health providers. I can show you what is the experience in Bogota. And as you can, you can see, the first map is the, the, the map of, uh, of the network, of the public network. The second is the distribution of the uh, health center of the private. Uh, in, the, the, in the third map, I don't know if it's, there is is uh, the distribution of the network of the hospitals. We survey 
uh, all these uh, this, uh, health centers, but we, we, uh, we performed a special survey for the hospitals. Uh, because uh, it was very important to know what happened at the hospitals and it's going to be published, the results uh, in, in, in next. Uh, uh, the other survey here I can show you, uh, the, the map and the system is in, the, in Guarulhos as the hospital network and the health centers. And also what uh, we show is that all health centers were treating TB before they were not treating TB. But also we map the informal providers. In the slums, there are other, other uh, providers. And as you can see, that's the, the, the map that was done in, uh, in the slums in Lima. And you can see there are a, a variety of, uh, of providers that are there. And for instance, in one of the slum, we, uh, we, we, uh, we, we saw that there are 55 health centers from informal providers per one of the Ministry of Health. So it means that these, uh, these uh, providers are there. So there were a survey also that was done uh, to these providers to ask what they are doing with the, with the TB suspect, uh, what is the conduct, uh, do, uh, do they refer, etc. And we also invited them to be part of the TB, uh, TB network. The other component is adapt the healthcare for the needs to the, the population at risk. And as you can see in Uruguay, for instance, uh, the, the points are the patients and the hospital treating tuberculosis are the hearts. So what happened is that the patients are very far from the hospitals. And what we saw in, uh, in, Mont in Uruguay is that the, the incidence is increasing uh, due to Montevideo. So the delay in diagnosis is due to not to implement uh, the TB control in the whole system. In the case of uh, Uribe Uribe, a locality in Bogota, if you can see, I don't know if it is, if you can see, for instance, the, 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 the health centers are located, most of them, in the north. Some others here in the south, but more are in the north. In, uh, uh, for the patients, when we're uh, uh, mapping the, map, the patients, you can see that, that the patients are located in the whole locality. So it, it, uh, it means that most of these patients cannot be have a, a DOT due to the, the, the distance that they have to do for, for having the, the treatment. So the, the, auto, the Colombians also map the social groups, the, the institutions, the social institutions, and they also invite to them to uh, be involved in the TB control for following the DOT. The fifth component is take an interprogrammatic approach to TB control to guarantee comprehensive patient care. In Colombia, they are doing an amazing job uh, in TB control and mental health. Uh, but also, there are also the, the Mexico is doing also an, an integrated care of TB and diabetes. Mainly too, we have some experiences also in uh, TB and tobacco. So we need to offer all the services for the patient. The, the patient that it is uh, in the service should be near the house of the patient. The problem was that, that we have in the region is uh, TB HIV. HIV is in the second and third level. And we have very difficulties to try to, uh, to um, integrate the, at the same level. But in Peru, for instance, they are working very hard for integrated TB HIV uh, uh, programs. So uh, also, no, uh, take an inter the sixth uh, component is uh, take an intersectorial approach to TB control and include TB in social protection programs. At the, uh, at the uh, subnational level, there are some uh, committees, intersectoral committees, uh, that uh, sit in people representative of the ministries, the different ministries. Here I show you some, uh, some uh, uh, multisectorial committees in, in, in Peru, and uh, the TV program talked with them, analyzed the plans of a, each sector uh, sitting in this, uh, in this table, and to try to introduce TV. In, uh, in El Agostino was introduced, uh, they, they fixed also indicators how to follow up, but the problem is that there are changes, political changes that are difficult to do, to have a, a, a regular uh, work with them. But protection, or social protection also, it's a big issue. And in most, of the, in most of the countries, the social protection, the patients are in social protection programs. But social protection programs that are from the, the ministry, the, the government, so the social protection at that uh, level, the policy. So 
<laughs> uh, promote the, the seven uh, uh, components is promote the civil society engagement in TB prevention and control activities. Uh, as you can see in Guarulhos, uh, they map the social groups and they're involved in TB control. In Lima, there are a lot of uh, le uh, community leaders doing the DOT for patients and also in uh, Colombia, as I showed you previously. Establish a routine monitoring and evaluation system for monitoring this, uh, this uh, framework. We decided some, we uh, wrote some in, in, uh, indicators like incidents, the trend of incidents, the mortality, the case detection, the case fatality rate. In Guarulhos, Brazil, and Bogota, they set up a, a committee for TB mortality to investigate the, all TB deaths, to evaluate the quality of care, to improve coordination with other institutions. I show you some data of the countries, uh, and what we are expecting is to increase more and more the detection of cases. So for uh, for the for finalize, uh, so I put some uh, things here uh, that it was done by the countries in blue as what the country said, and in uh, in black what uh, we I added. The first is was the framework allows for the development of comprehensive measures for the prevention and control of TB in the complex environment in big cities. Its implementation has strengthened the political commitment with the provision of human and financial resources. The initiative has been owned by national and local governments of na na eight countries of the region currently involved, and it has now expanded to other cities in pilot countries like Colombia and started in other countries. TV control in cities is now an important part in the agenda of the Ministry of Health and of the local governments in countries involved. The components on the framework allows to develop comprehensive interventions in TB control, especially in vulnerable groups, according to the needs of the population. The implementation of the initiative is generating its inclusion in the operational guidelines of TB control in countries, and community involvement facilitates implementation of the initiatives and gives more ownership. Thank you very much, uh, and I want to thank to, to uh, thanks Express to USAID that uh, is helping uh, to us to implement uh, this initiative that it is very su 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 successful in the region. And sorry for my English. Thank you, Mirta. Um, I have to say, I think USAID kind of tortured Mirta by giving her such little money for such great ambitions, but that's part of the amazing part of this project. And I think in your earlier presentation, you had this graph of domestic resource mobilization as a result of this initiative. It was quite spectacular. Yeah. Any questions for Mirta? Colombia. What I show? Yeah, yeah it's what uh, uh, the the NTV manager of uh, Colombia is here. It mobilized uh, one million dollar for TV control in Bogota a year. No, this last year it was one million dollars. So it was amazing, amazing uh, result. And it is from the local government because the Ministry of Health, uh, Ministry of Health is going is giving some money, but it's not enough. So now the the TV is based uh, in the local. Uh, Money. I was just wondering maybe there's any, if you have a disaggregation of how that extra money was spent, so what services that money went towards and how that improved. No, I don't have this data. Maybe the doctor uh, can show us some, something about that, if you can explain something. Sí, si sí, la plata que se aumentó en, eh, en Bogotá llega a algunos sectores en especial, ¿en qué se está utilizando esa plata? So it is dedicated to the high at risk population. You know that in, in the Americas, the incidence is low. So most of the countries uh, have less than, uh, than 50,000, 50, how? That 50 per 100,000 uh, per 100, uh, 
uh, incidence rate, and so most uh, of the money is going to uh, to con TB control in a re uh, at high risk uh, population. Good. Okay, uh, one last question back here. Yes. What I can talk is about uh, what happened in, uh, in uh, South America. Uh, so in prisons, what we are doing is a special program also that we uh, match uh, the prison and one uh, health uh, services outside the prison from the Ministry of Health. And they are working together. And uh, the guidelines are very well implemented in prisons. The drugs and the diagnosis also are coming from the Ministry of Health. And there are a lot of supervisions. We have uh, amazing results that maybe in other opportunity next year we can present these results. Great. OK, thank you again, Mieta. Thank you. Now, uh, <coughs> now we go to uh, Amir Khan from uh, Pakistan, IRD. Uh, he will tell us about uh, what's happening in Karachi. And I, I thought you also mentioned that you will briefly touch upon the social enterprise model that uh, was also a question. I will thank you very much for the invitation and thank you for, for coming to listen to us. This is an incredibly exciting time for urban TB control and I'm, you know, you've heard from Dhaka already. You'll hear some of what we're doing in Karachi and then hopefully we'll hear from um, Mumbai and Patna um, as well, uh, where some extraordinary results are, are coming out. So this is really um, a very exciting time. Um, I'm just going to give you some <clears throat> some um, con you know, sort of context for the environment that we are operating in within Karachi. So it's a city of about 22 to 24 million people. And if you look at the last, the historical data for case notifications, um, on this chart, um, you're seeing, sorry, Okay. Everybody else seems to have gotten this much more easier than I did. But on this chart, what you're seeing is really the accumulation of, at the bottom, all the TB cases that are being identified from the public sector, from the NGO sector, the free hospitals, as well as from the private GP clinic networks in orange. So the blue is the public sector, the pink is these NGO hospitals, and the orange are the, um, the uh, GP networks. But if you look at the actual estimates that are based on the WHO global report for how many incident cases there are in Karachi, we should not be reporting under 20,000 cases per annum. The point estimate is that there may be actually as many as 65,000 cases in the city, incident cases in the city each year. So what's been going on for the last 10 or 15 years um, really is a, a very small sort of success in terms of the total cases that should be notified and put on treatment um, in the environment. Um, what we did in 2011 through a TB REACH grant and our first in a series of TB REACH grants that we implemented in Karachi in the same particular site and then broadened it up later on was we were able to show that if you screened verbally, if you verbally screened patients and attendants coming to small private GP clinics um, in the evenings, you could double case notification in a very quick time. So if you look at 2011, which is when we introduced the intervention, the red line is for all forms of TB in the intervention area, and the uh, darker blue line is for bacteriologically positive, and you can see that both of those doubled or even or slightly increased, whereas in the control population, the light blue and light green, those remained static. That was an adjacent town within Karachi. We then worked with um, David Dowdy and his team to project what might happen if we kept this intensity of interventions going in the private sector alone, but then expanded it to the whole of the city. And there was a simple model that he, uh, that he worked with and we, we published this, to and, and the model suggests that there may be a five-year cumulative reduction in mortality of up to 50% and in the incidence of the disease of up to 25% if you kept the same intensity of private sector screening at GP clinics and yet just had scaled it up to a city of 24 million people instead of the one or two million people that, we, that the TB REACH project worked in. Following this, we did several other TB REACH 
projects that focus on in engaging with the private laboratories, childhood TB, and the social enterprise model, which came through a combination of a Unit TB expert, Unit A TB expert grant and TB Reach complementary fundings to three sites, Karachi, Dhaka, and Jakarta. IRD managed that um, in terms of its conceptualization and then worked with the teams in each of these three cities to have them lead, adapt, and implement them. Um, so you heard about the Bangladesh experience just earlier. So what happened after, I have keep showing you the 2011 data, but for the last now five years, with TB reach investments at about approximately $500,000 a year for a population of 1 million for which this data is coming from, so about 50 cents per person per year, what we've what, what's happened is that the baseline case notification rate has now been sort of maintained at 400 per 100,000 over the last five years. We recognize now that if that's how much money you're going to put in, that's pretty much what you're going to get for it. If you want more, you're going to have to do a lot more. We also introduced a social enterprise model in 2013, and that now provided completely free um, uh, gene expert testing, and we've seen sort of our biologically positive rates rise again, but then there's a natural sort of limit. You get what you invest. You get back what you invest in. So we've had to then rethink about how do we take this effort forward. We know it's working to a certain extent. And what we've been very lucky with is that there was a need for reprogramming of global fund underspending in our country. And we were able to work with the National TB program as well as the global, as well as the global fund and other stakeholders to identify $20 million that we could invest in Karachi in 20 months for 20 million people. So 20, 20, 20 as a reference, if you were trying to understand how big the project was, how much funding we had, and how much time we were trying to do this in. And this started in May of this year. And what's happened is that our social enterprise model, previously there were only three centers, and they covered about two and a half million people. Now we've been able to take, we now have 31 centers. So there's a tenfold increase in the scope of the social enterprise and the business model. Our revenues, which were with three centers, were at about $100,000 per year generated from laboratory tests and x-rays for patients who did not have TB. So there were tests and x-rays from patients who did not have TB is now expected in 2017 to exceed $2 million if everything goes as we expect based on our current uh, revenue streams. So what we anticipate that $2 million will do is once Global Fund is gone, <coughs> those revenues from other tests and other x-rays will continue to support this infrastructure for finding new cases for TB in the private sector. And that was the whole intent of, of going down this road. There is a special part, which is our, um, the circle that you see here, which is our sort of our pilot site. This is uh, the two million people that have been part of the constant intervention through TB REACH grants. And we're now making this a new part of a new initiative called Zero TB. And I'll talk to you about that in just a little moment. But this is, Karachi is 24 odd million people. This particular part, the zero TB part, is about 2 million people or 2.5 million people. So say about 10% of the city. And so as we now show you the basic concept of what we are referring to as the zero TB initiative, the basic concept is that in all of us have search and treat running often at certain extents, what we don't often have is a very strong prevent arm. And many times we don't even have a very strong search and treat arm. We have the passive, surveillance, passive treatment sites, we have a passive case finding. What we're doing under the Zero TB initiative that's been launched in, in Karachi now is that there's this complex but yet comprehensive set of linked interventions that are providing us an, a, a focus on two large components that did not exist before. The PREVENT, which is contact tracing and post-exposure treatment for, for uh, household members of index cases, as well as a very comprehensive package of social support for households, not just patients, for households that have patients with TB, really trying to overcome the, the social determinants of health gaps that exist in these families for, and which are often the reason these, these people or adults or children have, have disease in the first place. So um, this is what we've been working on for the last seven months um, and really rolling this out with a team of uh, a very large team under this grant. 
There are three pillars of this initiative. There's the $20 million is being spent almost equally through the public health facilities, strengthening public health facilities, strengthening the NGO sector and strengthening the Zindagi Center. Zindagi is, means life and it's our, the name, the brand for our social enterprise. And the reason we're doing this is because there, the public sector is critical, needs to be strengthened, and patients are already coming there and they're often the poorest patients. The NGO sector is often underfunded. The poorest patients come there as well because they're mostly charitable hospitals, completely free of cost. Um, but yet they are often not engaged well. And then the private sector is completely ignored in most of these large urban centers. And so we are reaching out to all the patients who do seek affordable care. This is not expensive care. This is still free, but yet you have to, you know, it's still, excuse me, it's still low cost, but you have to pay something for it. So um, let me take, give you a sense of what the details perhaps are, and I'll orient you on this slide. So the Zindagi Center, and I've I bring this up not because it's the most important, but because it's sort of perhaps the biggest innovation. Mm -hmm. We previously had three uh, main centers. We now have eight of these screening centers with digital x-rays, gene expert machines, full, a full um, a capacity for testing all kinds of laboratory tests. So when a GP sends a patient with you know, biochemistry and uh, all the behaviors that Shibu and others will speak to you about as well, um, they, you, you have to cater to that because otherwise the patients stop coming to you or the GP stops sending the patients to you. So we've got a whole central diagnostic laboratory through this network of eight main centers and 23 satellite centers, fixed little x-ray systems, mobile x-ray systems linked to these sites, gene expert machines, UVGI lights that are going into private hospitals or the high volume um, GP clinics where lots, lots and lots of adults and children are, you know, uh, are being mixed. There's a network of 1,100 uh, GPs who are routinely followed up through 40 medical rep reps, just the way a pharmaceutical company would have them, except now we are seeking patients with TB. The total size of the uh, patient of the GP network is, 10, is approximating about 10,000 that we're accessing, but it's 1,100 that are our focus. And there's a dedicated call center. So um, what this is essentially is, is there are that pattern is now then replicated in the public health facilities. So we're going to the 12 largest public health facilities where we're putting 100 screeners in, implementing fast, rapid identification of uh, individuals who are coughing and then separating them, testing them and putting them on treatment. Every NTP reporting site, so the, the universe of the investment that the National TB program has made within the city of Karachi, we are providing screening facilities, diagnostics and support and you know, over um, overtime, et cetera, top-ups for, for workers. Uh, we're putting in UVGI lights for airborne infection control in the largest emergency rooms and um, uh, OPDs. Again, we have a dedicated small fleet of mobile digital extras that are linked to these public sites. And we are also managing childhood TB and comorbidities and post-exposure treatment for patients who are going to be need, needed to be put on um, in, our, in our pilot site. There's again a dedicated call center and, um, and, and lots of field staff that support the public sector. Then finally, this is the not-for-profit NGO sector. And again, we're going into six large NGO hospitals. We've got a CT scan because the number of childhood TB that we're now seeing and the number of CT scans that we were having to pay for are, you know, for the patients, it came to the, the numbers came to such that we just could afford to buy a CT scan of our own under this grant. And uh, we did at the Indus Hospital. And so now again, this network has its own small fleet of gene expert, excuse me, fleet of uh, X-ray machines, mobile X-ray machines, and all the other components here as well. What's happened with this money that we've received is we have essentially made access, universal access to TB diagnostics, rapid diagnostics, and TB treatment, including the new drugs accessible to the 24 million people in the city. There is no place, no geography left in the city where one of our centers in some form or shape is not within a 10 minute walk or drive or whatever you know, other means for you. But, but this is as much as we can think up of investing into a city. And <clears throat> I'm just gonna summarize what we anticipate. So we have now achieved with our previous three um, 
uh, our social enterprise at th with working at three sites. We were now beginning to average about 10,000, you know, adding and supporting the public sector as well, adding about 10,000 or, or reporting about 10,000 TB cases, um, bacteriologically positive TB cases to Karachi. What we now expect with this comprehensive search street prevent in intervention is that we are not only going to be able to generate a revenue stream, we've expanded our business model 10 times, but that, and from non-TB patients, please don't go away thinking we're making money from TB patients. It, this is for the other diseases and other patients that come to us. Uh, but we are now going to target just from the private sector itself, approximately 10,000 patients, all forms TB um, each year. And so that's a 12 month um, target through, through this investment. So the take home message really is that in this instance, Global Fund was took a country that had underspending, and there are many countries that have underspent. Some last, yesterday, Luchika and others at the Global Fund meeting, I did, you know, said there's, there's $800 million at risk of being not used because countries have these allocated to them, but they're not utilizing them fast enough. If you need ideas, you know, zero TB is a great idea to take a city in your country forward with quickly adding new drugs, but I can laminate to you for your patients and increasing that number. That's another way of spending quick money, but just the zero TB pitches, you know, these models exist. Uh, Global Fund has a precedent. It's already funded Karachi, um, and it is likely to begin to fund others that we are engaging them uh, with as well, trying to engage them, encourage them in. So I think um, if, 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 I, if I may, the social enterprise model that we began with was extremely ambitious. It was high risk. Any business is high risk. Making sure that you have the right partners is crucially important. With ICD-DRB, that uh, the social, their social enterprise model worked really well and is growing. And now I know that there are other partners in Bangladesh that are looking forward to establishing additional social enterprise models. In Pakistan, we are now expanding. My, my presentation was focused on Karachi, but we actually, the social enterprise, uh, our social enterprise received further funding to expand to other cities in Pakistan. So we have national coverage anticipated with a social enterprise in any high, uh, in any town that's larger than um, 500,000 people, town or city, if you will. So, um, so I think these, these are create, uh, capturing traction and I think we should look at them again, even where they failed, like my, myself and uh, my partners in uh, Indonesia, we failed in, um, in Jakarta to launch but I think that's something that we can all go back and that and other sites um, that we can all go back and, uh, and revisit. So um, I just, again, this is the involvement of a large number of people. I presented mostly data from Pakistan, so I'm not acknowledging uh, mostly our partners currently in Pakistan uh, and in Karachi, but uh, this is a really a global effort to push things forward in new ways at, in, in urban centers. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. Uh, uh, very clear, bold, innovative, and now getting scaled up. So very good to hear that. Uh, any questions, comments? Yes, first you. Um, thank you. Really, really just, um, something that's really hard with these multi-component interventions is evaluating. Speak up. Whether, I don't know whether you kind of considered that and how you might be able to take findings from something like this and actually kind of, kind of find out how much of the impact was associated with any one of these components. And so anyone trying to choose between it, they can't implement a whole intervention, maybe they can choose a few components. And so it's a, it's a great question. And Right. So we have a, a whole, we have a team and, um, and a network of partners that are focused on an impact evaluation of the rollout of the Zero TB uh, program in Karachi. The principal intervention that is of interest to us is the large-scale use of post-exposure treatment because we think that is fundamentally what's making, going to make a difference. Because everything else, active case finding, is just a perpetual case finding exercise. It's, we could be here 20 years from now and we will be reporting our little graphs and charts that this is what we're doing. If you want to end this problem or try to get to the close of the end of the problem, you're going to have to start using prophylactic, you know, um, uh, post-exposure therapy, so the treatment of latent TB infection. Um, and if you, so if, 
it makes sense to introduce that, especially when you have already now achieved universal access to diagnostics and treatment, which in this environment we have. So we're now scaling, uh, we're uh, piloting, if you will, in 10% of the city, the full scale rollout of post exposure therapy for every patient and household, for, excuse me, for every household of index cases. So I think that's the measure that we're most interested in because the rest is things everybody, you know, most of us have done, uh, but in small pieces and with different intensities. We have thoughts on how we're going to assess it. Um, just as an example, so a childhood infection survey, um, we think is the best way of measuring, is one of, the, one of the better ways of measuring interruptions in transmission or reductions in transmission in, this, in the community. So maybe, a, um, you know, having an intervention and a control site because, because of the way we're introducing the PET, we're able to stagger it out and we may be able to then determine if we're seeing reductions in infections in children. And that's just one way. There's some other ways we're also going to take. We're going to take out multiple impact evaluations so that we can measure it one way or the other. And if, you know, if it works, we hope to be able to pick it up in one of them. Thank you. Uh, Akram first, and then Shibu, and then I see some more hands. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Showing you on the path, uh, case of a very different way. Let's uh, proceed. Uh, one critical question to you: that uh, you know, I'm from Bangladesh, so I just say from my country perspective. Because, uh, would you like to have this experience moving forward in, in Bangladesh? Uh, the experience that you have with SGRB, and initially we had a partnership, but we'd like to move forward in the next level, particularly in the big towns, in the cities. Uh, one fundamental question to you that uh, how, because you saw the three clear models one in the public sectors, one in other NGOs, and one, one with you, your business models. So, how do you interact with each other? And how do you see that? Right. Particularly the reactions from the NGOs, right. those you're working with. So, so right. can you just give us those things? It's a great, great question. Um, we were in a discussion earlier with William as well, who, was, who asked that very much thing. So there's one, th one thing that is very useful is in an initiative like this, not to brand it with an is institution. So we've learned that from our previous social enterprise models, it was too closely linked to say IRD or to the Indus Hospital in our context. So we've now kept zero GB in none of our meetings, in none of our documents does it, is there a logo of an institution other than zero GB? The reason something like that is important is that a city can then own it. Because somebody in the city doesn't, there's always somebody who doesn't like you. So you, you have to own it. And then it has to be owned by the city leadership. So um, in Karachi, the mayor of our town is in jail. So we have reached out to the Chamber of Commerce to be the, the leadership um, you know, of the, because the business community has the most interest in, in, in making sure that their city and their workers don't get TB because they pay for that in real terms when sometimes the government doesn't. So, so I think there's, you know, you do need to find the right platforms, but you can't completely hand the keys over to them because you have to run it from the background, but let them take all the credit and everything they want and it's, it's fine. And you have to sort of put your institutional ego in check because there's a lot of pressure internally from our own, like, oh no, we're the principal recipient, we should why is our logo not here? Why is this announcement going in the newspaper without this logo? And you know, you, that, if you want to destroy a project initiative like that fast, that's the first way to do it. It's got to be owned by the city. Does everybody in the city needs to feel it's owned by me and they need, need not, there's no need to associate it with a specific organization. So what we've done is we've sort of said, here's a zero GB initiative in the sky, um, which is a global sort of initiative, and there's Chennai and, and Lima and, you know, uh, now others hopefully coming on, and we are part of that initiative. So that completely removes this local, you know, these local dynamics away from the picture. Well, mostly removes the local dynamics. Now, uh, I am mindful of the time. Uh, I saw four hands, including Shibu here and three there. Uh, can, we, can we have... Uh, if you if you are okay, can we have the presentations go through and then we have yeah. uh, after the next two presentations a discussion? And Amir, would, would you be in room at that time? I, I I will be. Okay. So if it if it is okay, should we do that way? Okay. Good. So uh, uh, let's go to uh, the next one.
which is uh, from uh, uh, Prachi, uh, Prachi Shukla, and she will tell us about what's happening in the eastern part of India, two cities, Patna and Kolkata. Hello, everyone. I'm Prachi Shukla, and I'm representing World Health Partners. Um, to tell you very briefly about the organization, we are a non-profit, registered non-profit Indian society, and uh, which has an uh, which has a aim of uh, providing good quality health and reproductive health services to vulnerable and marginalized communities at scale. We are currently working across four states in India: uh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, uh, Rajasthan, and West Bengal. Very recently. Do I move? Okay. So just to give you an idea that in order to strengthen and support the Government of India initiative and to end TB, what we are doing is we are um, um, implementing programs in two cities of India. One is Patna, Bihar, that we are um, supported by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And the other one, which is very recently awarded and supported by USAID, it is in Kolkata, West Bengal. So Patna, we have been uh, implementing this program for over two years now, which is commonly known as the Private Providers Interface Agency. And um, just to give you a little brief on Patna, the total population is around 6.2 million. And when we started off in early 2014, we saw that we were kind of just uh, doing the baseline and mapping exercises, and we tried to dig out uh, the government data related to case notification from the private sector. And I have intentionally not mentioned it here because I felt that it's of no use mentioning here. It was absolutely negligible. So there was no notification coming from the private sector at that point of time. And similarly, I'll tell you what happened next. But in Kolkata, we are currently now in um, doing the mapping and baseline exercises currently going on. And as per the data, annual TB report 2014, there have been just 24 cases that have been notified out of 85 registered private facilities in Kolkata. And Kolkata is a huge city with a population of 14.1 million and around 5,500 slums. This is just, and I'm kind of repeating what you already know, this is the general care-seeking behavior of households. This data is from Patna, but it is also representative in Calcutta. This is very similar findings we are getting from Kolkata also, is that if you see that two-thirds of the population, they access healthcare through a private qualified doctor in a city. And then one-fifth of these households rely completely on pharmacies for very general basic ailments. So the point that I'm trying to make is that resources, apart from the public sector, the resources within the private sector are also scattered. So it's the formally qualified, the qualified medical doctors, you have informal providers, you also have Ayush, you have pharmacies there. So there, this scattered or highly fragmented sector also needs a system to collectivize all the efforts in order to ensure an ecosystem of TB care. And this is what we intend to do. We have been doing it in, for the past two years in Patna, and now we are rolling it out in Kolkata also. So this is what we, and again, just to strengthen the TB control effort, what we are trying to do is we are engaging with broad network of formally and informally qualified providers, pharmacies, pathology labs, using a very low cost technology reporting platform, and also an inclusive system of incentives, which is both financial as well as service based, to reward and motivate the providers for doing appropriate and timely diagnosis of TB and providing treatment. We're also using e-vouchers for drugs and diagnostics, and there is a back-end call center that is managed by around 10 to 15 counselors that are doing end-to-end -end process from patient registration to validation of vouchers and uh, treatment adherence, compliance reporting, and also tracking the treatment outcomes. This is just a snapshot of the achievements so far from the Patna project, and hopefully in next year in the Lung Conference, we will be able to present some good numbers for Kolkata also. And uh, we have notified so far around 35,000 cases through the uh, private sector. And out of these cases, 
percent of these notified cases have got free drugs, and 70 percent patients have reported adherence. And total uh, cases that have been so far notified, six percent of them have been contributed by the informal providers. Provider coverage, this will give you an idea. Uh, this is the cumulative trend year on year. So year one, two, and year three, uh, which is until September, we currently have, we are working with around 573. In this year only, we are working with 573 formally qualified providers and around 345 uh, informally qualified providers. And out of these, at any given time, 68% are formally qualified and 35% are active in any given quarter. And in our bid to continuously improve quality and performance, we also have a dedicated team that takes care of capacity building, training, and orientation of all of these providers. What we do is we, we either regularly organize CMEs or orientations or smaller group discussions where we also ensure that the state is well represented, the public sector officials are well represented, and also eminent chess specialists and other doctors are there so that group discussion is even more participatory and people, especially the qualified doctors, MBBS and other physicians, they are able to kind of discuss issues and challenges that they are facing. Also what we do through the program intervention, what we also do is that we feel that feedback mechanism is very, very critical for the success of the program. So a monthly report card is generated for each and every individual provider on the basis of the key metrics. And when we find that that there are certain people or certain providers who are not kind of performing up to the par or their performance is regularly or consistently poor, what we do is we engage with them on one-to-one -one sensitization. So it, it is either through a medical officer or a field officer going and checking with them, checking, talking about their issues and challenges and understanding their perspective. This is just a snapshot of the report card. The red lines are the ones which gives us an alert that this is how it's going on on the individual performance report card. So patient coverage and um, all the patients that are treated in the private sector is um, estimated by a pharmacy surveillance conducted by a third party. And uh, uh, taking those key metrics from the third party, when we kind of validate our e-vouchers, we found that out of the total patients that have been serviced, 16,300, we are catering to around 55% of these patients who are privately treated through our e-vouchers. And uh, when we are talking about patient-centric approach, we cannot leave the community out. So one is the provider, which is extremely important. The other are, of course, the patients. But the community, as on an overall level, is extremely critical and important. And we <coughs> feel, and taking your point, that prevent is something that we often are not kind of mindful of. So we engage with a lot of these grassroots level NGOs and also community volunteers and uh, the government people working there in these in these areas and organize a lot of these meetings. It can be a household meeting, it can be a, um, a larger meeting organized by, by the NGOs, which, which helps in um, uh, spreading TB awareness and educating the families. And if there are patients, TB patients within these families, we also counsel them how to take care of them, what nutrition, what food has to be given. We also organize health screening camps across uh, these cities to identify, do an active case finding. Sorry. This is just to give you an idea about the case notification in Patna. And uh, we contribute 85% of the total cases notified in the district, both public and private. And out of this, 19% are pediatric, and majority of them are pulmonary cases. Treatment outcomes, just 73% uh, of all of these TB patients have successfully completed their treatment. And through the call center, we are tracking their uh, treatment adherence. And 18% have been not evaluated because of various factors. Their, their mobile numbers, they're not reachable, or they are migratory population. They've gone back somewhere else. So just coming to my last slide is that We've learned a lot of lessons, some good and some bad. 
and it was very difficult for us to kind of put it in just one slide. But when we talk about the private sector, and um, it definitely is important and key that we always, always leverage the existing associations in the city or the state, wherever it is. It becomes much more easier and convenient because the onboarding of these doctors or associations is, is kind of very easy. And then, though these informal providers, they have, uh, they have very good social skills, but they definitely, definitely lack medical skills. So when you are making them a part of your program and you're continuously looking up to them for referral or counseling, etc., you will have to provide them with a lot of support, with a lot of hand-holding, and a close follow-up is, is, is extremely essential. And when it comes to private sector, whether it's a formally qualified doctor or an informal provider, their essential DNA is profit making. So they need money. And when you, through your program, through timely reimbursements, you assure this, the trust is developed over time, then you don't even need to follow with people. They themselves will be continuously motivated to provide cases. And then your effective data systems. This is extremely, and I understand that all of, um, all of the organizations that are running and implementing programs, they are relying heavily on data. Because data is something, ICT applications are something that will give you real time picture of what is actually happening on ground. And I think this is a non-negotiable part of any program where you can, you definitely should, if you have not, but I think everyone has done, you definitely should invest in ICT applications, which can give you real-time analysis. And this analytics that is available through these applications can be fed directly to the program managers who are implementing the program for course correction. That is extremely important. Thank you. I don't have a slide of acknowledgement, but I do want to acknowledge the support of USAID and uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the government of India, and uh, state government of Bihar and West Bengal, and all of you colleagues who have come here to listen to us, and definitely to uh, Dr. Sahu and William Bells. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, very new and innovative, impressive results. Any quick questions? Maybe one or two burning questions. Then we'll proceed to the next one. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm Imran from Path, uh, India. I wanted to ask, uh, you say that 85% of the notifications are from uh, this initiative. And you have combined, yeah. Yeah, combined. And 55% as per IMS data has been As we heard from Amit Khan also, that are, are efforts being made to strengthen the government health system? Because Patna has been a major healthcare hub, and there are a lot of patients coming to public sector. Maybe uh, we, we really don't have that strength in public sector, which is capturing the rest of the patients. Absolutely, this is very true, and this is very possible also. But the whole idea is, and uh, I will also tell you, which I didn't kind of mention in the presentation, is that this, uh, the first phase of the PPIA is coming to an end. In fact, it ended now, and we are into the second phase, where we are integrating with the public sector. So the whole idea was to demonstrate that this is how you can engage with the private sector. This is how you can put all the management systems into place, and this is how you can optimize efficiency. And now we will be moving towards the strengthening of public sector and working with them. So the e-vouchers, etc., sector, we are planning to, they will taper down. So that's the whole crux. Yeah. Thank you, Prachi. Uh, so we move on to the next one, uh, Mumbai. Uh, Daksha Shah will tell us about what's happening in Mumbai. Mumbai has been in the news uh, for TB for initially uh, the wrong things, but then you have been able to turn it over and project it to do some, I mean, you have done some good things as well, yeah. So thank you, Dr. Sahu Williams, uh, for inviting, and thank you, uh, all of you, for, uh, you know, being with us. Uh, we have heard uh, many models uh, since morning. I think today I was listening to Afghanistan as well in the morning. I listened to uh, South Africa, Uganda, uh, Americas. It's really exciting and enriching to learn from these uh, different models, and and I think ultimately everybody's uh, striving to reach, uh, you know, to NTB goals. 
Uh, what I am going to present is a very comprehensive uh, strategy which uh, we have in place in Mumbai and just uh, how we have upgraded our services uh, from 2013 to 2016 and my every slide will I will also uh, show you uh, what are our plans in next three years 2016 to 18. Uh, when I was listening to Amir, I was just uh, wondering, in fact, I was a bit jealous <laughs> listening to <laughs> $20 million available as a funding because always uh, the funding is a, a big issue whether we want to expand our plans or programs or strategies and then we need to look for some other funding patterns. So I hope that, uh, you know, this uh, kind of platform which has been available through these conferences uh, for the urban met metro, metro cities, uh, uh, the, 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 some of the solutions comes, uh, you know, from this uh, conversation and the dialogues. So uh, I will take you to Mumbai. Uh, Mumbai is situated into the Maharashtra state. It's on the western side of India and more than 12 million population, something similar to Calcutta, I think a little less from Calcutta. Uh, and it's a commercial city uh, and it's a commercial capital of India and we have more than, we contribute to more than 6% of the national GDP. Uh, map of Mumbai, uh, you can see uh, Mumbai is divided into uh, 24 wards. Uh, is this the pointer? Yeah. Uh, some of the red areas and the orange areas are the areas where there are highly uh, dense uh, slum pockets. More than 60% of its uh, population is in the slum and slum like areas. Uh, we have population density of 23,000, again 50% uh, uh, more people who are staying in slums and we have migrants which are also an intra-city migrants and we have migrants uh, from one city to other and, and, and that creates a problem uh, when following of the patients on DOTS and other uh, MDR-TB. So we have all the ingredients uh, which can lead to uh, you know, uh, spread and transmission of uh, TB in the city. Uh, I have not spoken about the health system though. Uh, Mumbai has a very strong public health uh, system and uh, we have uh, been implementing the revised national tuberculosis control program under the guidelines of national government and the state government. Uh, but, but in Mumbai we have a little different model. We have uh, modified our model. We have adopted to uh, uh, you know, uh, accommodate the new uh, strategies and the programs which we want to implement and uh, the fundings are uh, ab 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 uh, coming from the central and the state government as well as municipal corporation is putting in funding and the partners are also uh, you know chipping in uh, for doing certain interventions. Uh, public health system of Mumbai we have around 185 primary health centers and uh, we have 170 dispensaries and we have some 20 peripheral hospitals and we have five medical colleges in Mumbai. So through this whole entire public health system we implement a lot of uh, national health programs and TB is also one of the national health programs but we do have the the staffing which is uh, also been provided through the national health programs. So uh, I will just show you some of the statistics. Uh, you can see here. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the, the central uh, uh, circle is the population. Uh, I'm comparing uh, Mumbai with the state with India and the middle circle is the drug sensitive TB cases and outer circle is the drug resistant TB cases. Mumbai has a population of around 1% of the country but it has a drug sensitive tuberculosis which is 2% of the country reported and we also report 12% of the total MDR cases of the entire country. So we have a disproportionate burden of MDR TB in Mumbai. Uh, in in terms of absolute numbers, uh, we have reported 45,000 uh, drug sensitive cases in 2015 and out of that 27,000 came from the public sector and rest came from the private sector engagement. So we have roughly around 350 uh, cases per 100,000 population as the case notification rate in 2015 and uh, definitely with the private sector engagement model which similarly which Prachi talked just now, uh, we also do have this uh, model implemented through PATH. And uh, we have definitely improved uh, the case notification rate. So I'll go a little uh, further. Mm. This is okay. The challenges, of course, remains the same for all the urban cities. Uh, we have urbanization, uh, poor TB risk perception by the providers as well as, um, uh, you know, the patients, inadequate diagnostic and uh, treatment facilities in the private sector as well as uh, not very much in line uh, with the uh, treatment protocols. Unregulated private sector, we have roughly around five to 6,000 uh, private sector providers whom we have engaged around 3,500 to the path uh, uh, 
program. Comorbidities, uh, like any other cities, we are also progressing to NCD. I was listening to uh, you uh, in the morning that uh, there is a huge uh, diabetes and NCD, uh, you know, uh, morbidities in, in, in Americas, even so as in Mumbai also. And we have poor AIC measures, uh, uh, which is there. So all this is leading to, of course, a, a high rate of transmission in the city. Uh, this all late in uh, 2013 uh, outbreak a uh, kind of thing where there a lot of MDR XDR cases were reported in the media uproar and this led actually to uh, you know make municipal corporation launch a special uh, campaign and this uh, I would say a Mumbai mission for TB control was launched in 2013 and under this the vision was to achieve the universal access uh, to early TB and MDR TB diagnosis and mainly an appropriate treatment in public and private sector both. So you can see here the basic, uh, the, the important strategies which has been defined uh, under this mission is uh, the organization strengthening in the center with all the, the components which we are now implementing. And in every slide, I will show you what we have achieved in 2013 to 16 and what are our plans for 16 uh, to 2018. The most important is that uh, we have this uh, whole initiative which is led by municipal government with the support from the national government, from the state government, from the partners like PATH, WHO and Bill Melinda Gates. And this is a very custom made uh, uh, approach for urban TB and it's a comprehensive model. And this model has been now adopted uh, by uh, many cities, uh, especially um, uh, yesterday I heard that it, even two to three cities in the India has been uh, implementing this model. So uh, we are now, uh, uh, I would say that uh, we are into the second phase of Mumbai mission of TB control and uh, India has released uh, 2016 new guidelines uh, for TB control and these guidelines are based on based practices, uh, newer evidences, patient-centric strategies as well as ICT platforms are been now made available and with the ICT support we are also now enhancing our services uh, using the ICT platforms and of course the flexible engagement structures for PPMV which has now been uh, adopted even in Mumbai. And universal access to quality TB services is always in the center stage. So uh, with this guidelines in place, uh, we are also uh, focusing on MDR TB services, which is being upgraded and, and we are exhilarating into uh, you know, directions of MDR and XDR treatment also. So our first uh, strategy is mission mode slum TB control. We do a rapid uh, slum TB round where we try to find out as many TB cases as possible in the slums. This was in 2013 and again uh, we have uh, started in 2016. Uh, we have completed four months of active case finding in slum and we have reached to 1 million population and we have identified uh, 2,000 suspect and a uh, 244 uh, cases amongst these suspect. And this is basically implemented with the help of partners and we have NGOs in the field and we have a protocols in place and we are trying to find as many as cases possible in the slum. So, so uh, the most important key deliverables in our this 2016-18 uh, 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 under the Mumbai mission second phase is to reach to most of the slum populations and these are the vulnerable population and I've shown you that the districts of Mumbai which are at high risk there are 12 districts which report the maximum number of MDR and XDR cases and we are trying to reach those communities. The next strategy is uh, access to rapid TB and MDR TB diagnosis. As you can see here that we have enhanced our diagnostic capacity in terms of not only microscopy center but the also uh, gene expert machines. Uh, we have around 22 machines now so we have rapid expansion of this uh, gene expert machines. Uh, we also have culture DST labs in Mumbai. We have two in private sec uh, public sector and three in private sector. Uh, what important strategies we have have partnership with this private labs. The public sector samples are flowing into the uh, private labs and there is an MOU and we are paying the private sector labs uh, for doing the culture DST. So we have this partnership model in Mumbai and, and that is how we have been able to expand our universal DST program also in Mumbai. Um, we also have this plan of universal DST expanding to entire Mumbai. Right now we are able to do in some districts of Mumbai and plan is by 2016 at least we should be able to provide gene expert to each and every diagnosed TB case and uh, as, as soon as I go back in November we are planning to uh, expand to entire Mumbai. And again we are strengthening the public sector capacity uh, for the labs because in the public sector we do not have much labs doing the culture DST. So we are trying to strengthen that aspect of labs uh, development because that's very crucial when we are expanding our MDR uh, capacity and 
I would also like to uh, bring just uh, a small uh, attention to this particular project which is uh, called as Denote and this is through the Chai initiative and uh, here we have tried to engage private labs into the program and the whole objective was to support the adoption of quality TB test in the private sector and also facilitate the notifications from the private labs. So through this initiative in last uh, almost uh, two years, uh, we have engaged 88 private labs in Mumbai and we have also diagnosed uh, around 30,000 cases or I mean not diagnosed, it's notified by these private labs. And, and this is over the last three years, uh, we have been able to achieve this private sector lab notifications and we have identified labs, we are trying to to build the capacity of even private labs so that they get accreditation under the national program and we can utilize the services for MDR-TB uh, diagnosis uh, through these labs. So this is an important uh, partnership uh, through the program and the private sector labs which has yielded some good results. Improving effective treatment is another aspect of Mumbai Mission for TB Control and we have dot centers, uh, we have decentralized uh, entire our uh, delivery of uh, treatment. So we have around 1600 uh, uh, dot centers in um, uh, private sector as well as like a lot of general practitioners I are our dot providers. We have pharmacies who are our dot providers and we have the CHVs that is the public sector community health volunteers is also the dot providers. So you can see that the dot centers has been increased. The DRTB OPDs, we have a full expansion plan for the DRTBs. Right now, we have uh, five ambulatory DRTB centers and by end of this year, we, we plan to do at least eight centers and we are trying to decentralize so that the patient don't have to travel long distances from their residence area to come to a centralized like a medical college or something. We also have indoor admission facilities available in one of the major hospitals, that is Shiva TB Hospital in Mumbai. And we are also now partnering with a private sector hospital uh, uh, to uh, have the admissions. So I will just go quickly because of this. So now the next uh, incoming is the DST guided treatment. We have already started DST guided treatment in nine districts of Mumbai. We are expanding by end of this uh, year uh, to all the centers of Mumbai. And Bedaquiline cap under the conditional access program, we have 18 patients on treatment on Bedaquiline and we are having almost planned for 100 patients. And again, uh, the enhanced case holding, we are having uh, focusing on counseling, patient support uh, systems through nutrition, respiratory hygiene and ICT based platforms which we are using uh, for actually uh, you know having a good treatment outcomes. If I have to just give you a glimpse of the outcomes we have around 78% uh, success rate and um, cure rate of around 70% in Mumbai in drug sensitive cases and 32% uh, success rate for uh, MDR-TB uh, case which is and the default rates in Mumbai is very high so that is why this case holding is very important for the city. Prachi has already discussed about this model, the similar model we have in Mumbai. We have Path, uh, the guys from Path are here, Dr. Shibu and all, and they are our partners in this program. They have tried to engage the private sector in the last two years. You can see some of the results, 33,000 uh, TB cases has been notified and we have 26,000 patients who have been given free treatment and 11,000 has completed the treatment already. So we have around 3,500 uh, formal and non-formal providers which have been engaged through the program and we have around 300 chemists and 268 labs which has been involved through PATH. You can see here uh, that there is a case notification which has improved. Um, uh, we had earlier 280 uh, per 100,000 which has gone up to 325 and 2015 and we have 350 cases per 100,000 population which is uh, an improvement in the case notification by private sector engagement program. And now uh, uh, moving towards the action plan, we are trying to also give the services of TB, HIV, H and TB diabetes as well as the nutrition and infection control through this whole mechanism. We are trying to extend and expand the services to other aspects of TB control. Infection control, of course, uh, uh, is also an integral part of our strategy and we have established the control committee. We have done the trainings and, you know, most of the medical colleges, uh, teachers has been involved in this. And now we have this ambitious plan where we have uh, developed a healthcare worker surveillance system as well as we have a, uni uh, a unit in our, my own office. We have uh, supported through CDC and we are going into the primary healthcare facilities for air infection control facilities as well as in the community. So more uh, focus is on the community transmission prevention and our efforts 
are now channelized in next three years on those aspects. Of course, you have listened to Amitabh Bachchan, a brand ambassador, uh, building a huge campaign. And this campaign started from the municipal corporation, went in to become a national campaign. And now you've heard him uh, at the international platform. And this has really re uh, yielded as a good result. Most of the general practitioners are telling us that listening to this campaign, the patients are coming and getting themselves tested. So this has really helped us. And it has reached to 99 million people in just first three months of its uh, you know, showing in the channels and the theaters and all. So we, we are using all out. And we are going almost all the media we are using to show this campaign and now the plan is to have more and more community engagement program all our district TV officer staff are engaging a lot of other agencies like we are in engaging schools we are engaging religious peer bodies we are also engaging and uh, uh, some small community uh, you know involvement like in terms of civil groups and civil society and and uh, we have a full SESM plan where every <coughs> district and the district TV officers are supposed to conduct as per the you know plans which we have done so we have a good community engagement component also inbuilt into program and there is a continuous dialogue with the politicians and media and our own administrators for full financial and you know good reporting even in the media uh, because we have continuous focus as Dr. Sahu said always uh, we have been have bed hit by the media so we are trying to uh, take the media also with us uh, so that we have at least a positive impact. Uh, last but not the least is organizational strengthening. We have almost doubled our own capacity. The program management unit in our city TV office has been also strengthened by the partners. And now the uh, something which is we look forward is of course uh, the software guided drug logistic management, decentralization and integration and alternative funding mechanism. And I was very excited to listen to Amir. So what are the learnings from Mumbai? The learnings are including all the stakeholders uh, in the initial stage. The MOUs have been done through the city TV office and the ownership is with the municipal corporation, advocacy with the media and politicians which is ongoing, evolving strategies from an um, uh, passive to intensify to active case finding and outsourcing of the private sector engagement through PATH and now we are trying to integrate that uh, whole uh, path mechanism into our own program and again the utilization of private sector for faster delivery of DRTB centers and the DRTB care. So our future holds like we are now I'm looking for intersectoral convergence which I was very excited to listen to Americas that we have been done doing this very successfully. So this is the two aspects which we need to focus in next coming years and I'm very hopeful with the India having developing new strategic plan for 2017 and to uh, 2030. 23, uh, these aspects will be addressed in this and even at the city level we are trying to address uh, some of the aspects of this. The health system trending is another uh, issue uh, and, and, and this, that's what we want to look at and the structural reforms within the system. Bold policies and regulations, we are pushing hard for the TB notification law. I was listening to Japan's experience and I was really excited that there are some really strict regulations on TB control and I'm really for it and, and let's see if we can push for that. And prevention and transmission control strategies. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm really much uh, excited that there are some new technologies which is coming which can prevent some transmissions in the health facilities as well as, as well as you know you can recommend to uh, some of the institutions uh, to use those facilities and last but not least is a research and innovations which we will try to see if we can uh, you know do it through the program so with this uh, I've given you a, a broad uh, uh, you know uh, uh, view of what has been happening in Mumbai and how the municipal corporation is doing with the help of partners. I would like to acknowledge uh, the Central TB Division, the state government, all my uh, partners, uh, medical colleges, and of course physicians and uh, patients. So thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, uh, any quick uh, questions? Uh, we could also take uh, quick questions on the uh, on the other presentations, but if you can just show the hands up people who want to ask questions. I, I see only two, okay. Uh, maybe three, yeah. Uh, are, you, are you there or you will have to leave? Okay. Uh, uh, so we start with Shibu. Yes, I'm maybe just Based on the 
Uh, yes, please. Yes. Yes. There, there is there is a decline in the public sector notification. What happens is in the field, the patients have a choice. Like uh, we have this, some of the providers who are even engaged through the private sector, and they are also the dot providers. So so when the patients is because in the dot system, what we are giving is an intermittent therapy. While here uh, there is a little change, they give the do, uh, daily uh, therapy. So uh, few of the patients who are not able to come to the center, they they prefer to go uh, to the private sector where they receive the vouchers for one month. So there is a little bit decline in uh, you know case notifications uh, from the public sector but overall notification of the city has improved so uh, what we are looking at the overall uh, notification of the city and not just the public sector because now it is the overall the cases which is lying in the city so we are not like having uh, too much uh, you know dependence on only the public sector notification because public sector is not declined there were some issues of duplication of the cases and we have already removed that so so uh, very well uh, point uh, yes you have a good uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, observations, yes. And the last uh, question uh, I saw. Okay. Go ahead, Sarah. Okay. You're always very ambitious, okay? So I just want to mention here that when we actually, you know, discussed about our project, GPD project, so three countries, we actually planned for actions and all those things. It's very ambitious, but actually it didn't work. You know, we came up with completely different models. In Jakarta, it didn't work. In Bangladesh, it was different. In Karachi, it was completely different. Okay. So you have to be very careful. When you, because I saw your very ambitious you know, project, this zero to the city. And my feeling is what you have shown, actually, in our national security of guidelines, we have everything. So what we need to do is we actually need to spend them on those things. It's not that you invest all your money in one city how will you actually sustain that? You have to have a kind of sustainable model. You know? And from our experience, from the TDD project, I can tell you that it's not that very really. easy. In our case, of course, we actually, we, we could somehow, we could attract our private <coughs> practitioners, but in Karate, it didn't happen. And that, in that because, because the situation is different, and you cannot actually, one model, you cannot actually scale up to everywhere. We're talking about the zero TV city, but uh, to me, I think it's too ambitious. 
churches and you don't need to invest that much of money in one city doing everything. Rather, you strengthen your uh, public sector activities and of course for the missing cases and other cases you have to have some kind of interventions to diagnose and report the cases from the crisis. So, you know very well because you have, I mean, we have our experience. So that's it. So, so uh, uh, no, I think we will go on like that. So, so, so I think that's a that's a, a comment, uh, and and uh, I don't I don't think do you, do you need to respond? Do you feel One minute. One minute. a quick quick response maybe? I, I yeah. feel Two sentences. Okay. But, but what I can say is to NTB, we have to think, uh, we have to have an ambitious plan and target, and we have to somehow proceed there. Of course, there are issues that we need to deal with. Uh, um, William, anything from your side? No, just to thank everyone. I think this was a, a very interesting session and a great argument to have uh, another Urban TV session next year. But uh, thank you very much to all of you. Yes, and stay engaged.